Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my top three all-time favorite scene partners. So if you want to hear all about that, keep on watching. First, I want to give a shout out to my very much appreciated Patreon members. I'm so grateful for all of you guys over there supporting me on Patreon, and if you want to get to know me on a much more intimate level, definitely check me out on Patreon. You won't be disappointed. Recently, I actually shared a picture of one of my new candle labels, so I've been listening to some of your guys' feedback about you know, things I can change and things I can improve on, and one of the things was adding more color to the labels. So check out my Patreon if you want a sneak peek of what my new candle labels will look like. So in today's video, I'm going to keep the editing to a minimum, and I just kind of want to do this as like a talk as I will talk freely video. <laughs> Somebody gave me the idea to talk about my top three all-time favorite scene partners recently, and I thought, wow, I should really do that because I tried to do this once before and I had some issues with that video, and I actually had to delete that video. Some of you may know what I'm talking about, but I'm going to try to do this again, and I'm not going to be mentioning any names of any models, and I'm not going to be mentioning any studios either, so I'm just going to give you know, rough estimates of when the scenes took place. I'm gonna try my hardest to get into the dirty details of it all. Okay, so I'm gonna be naming these guys from third to first place. So first place will be my all-time favorite, third place will be my third all-time favorite. Okay, so let's start with the first model, and he's gonna be called Kyle. Now, I had a scene with Kyle about three years ago, and during this time, I was really comfortable with working in the adult film industry. I felt like it was summer camp. Like, I looked forward to each and every shoot. It was a great way to get out of town for a little bit. And I was building myself up in the industry. More and more people were starting to, you know, like my videos and leave positive comments. So that just made me feel like, okay, I'm building myself up in this industry. You know, I feel good about this. And it's fun. On this particular shoot, I think it was maybe my fourth shoot. Yeah, this was probably my fourth shoot ever in the adult film industry, so I was still pretty new. Um, I wasn't a pro yet, but I was kind of innocent and still open with my emotions. I wasn't exactly closed off. So as soon as I got to the shoot house that week, I was greeted by this super sweet, gentle, just fragile kind of guy. And he was my age. He still is my age. So he was around 21. And he was just such a sweet dude. Compared to the, some of the other guys I worked with who were more intimidating and just a little bit more in your face with everything, he was very shy, not exactly closed off, but just the type of guy that doesn't say unnecessary things, you know? We've all met people that just kind of talk too much. But he was not one of these guys. And we actually kicked it off pretty quickly. And at this particular studio, there was a development that the house was in, and there was trails all throughout the development that you could walk in when you were done shooting, and just to get some exercise and some fresh air so you weren't just trapped inside the whole time. So him and I would go on walks and just talk about life, and he told me all about his life and where he is in his life. He was a chef at that time, and I think he was trying to save money to go back to school so he could get his degree in culinary. And I found that very inspiring, and it was nice to see another guy that actually has plans for you know his future. That's such a rarity compared to some of the guys that I've met throughout the industry. So I was sharing some of my plans with him, he was sharing his plans, and we were just getting along really well. You know, we would sit together at dinner each night, and when we woke up, we would be next to each other. And eventually, we started, like, getting touchy and sharing more intimate details about our lives with each other. And I just started to really like him. Like, every time he wasn't around me, I would try to go find him. And he was the same way. 
So we would text each other. We shared number. Yes, when we were in the same shoot house, we would text each other if we weren't near each other. So if he was shooting a scene, he would be like, oh, so-and-so is doing this, and I just want this scene to be over with. And he also worked at other studios prior to this shoot. So he wasn't brand new to the industry either. But it was just such a summer camp moment, like a summertime fling. And when our scene came up, it was the easiest, probably one of, if not the easiest scenes I've ever done in the adult film industry. It was like we were making love to each other. And the entire time, even when I first started, I thought that that's what it was going to be like acting out in these scenes. I thought it was going to be like very sensual, very enjoyable. But I learned very quickly that it's not like that in the adult film industry. It's acting at the end of the day. But with Kyle, it did not feel like I was acting. And the scene actually didn't score that high on the website, but I still go back and watch that scene sometimes because he is just such a sweet guy and I just wish him the best. Everything was so gentle. It wasn't rushed. It wasn't fake. It wasn't pound, 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 pound. It was just overall a very memorable hookup. So, Kyle, I hope you're doing well out there. You probably aren't watching this, but Kyle was definitely my third all-time favorite scene ever. <laughs> I haven't talked to him since, but we do have each other on social media, and I see his posts here and there, and um, yeah, I just hope he's doing well. I don't think he's in the industry anymore, but let's move on to the next one. <laughs> Okay, so the next one is going to go by the name of Ryan, and Ryan was a straight guy in his normal life, allegedly, <laughs> and he was also shy. He was kind of quiet, very stoic, you know, he just had this look on his face all the time, just very like that, and we didn't really get along the first time we met each other because the first time I met him, I didn't have a shoot with him. He just so happened to be on the next shoot that I went on at that particular studio. And that is when we started talking and we started playing video games together and just sharing our lives with each other, not too much, because he wasn't as gentle as Kyle was, but he was still opening up to me and I was opening up to him. And we also knew that we were gonna have a scene together and this was, one of his first scenes with another guy. So I knew that he was probably nervous and I didn't want to just be annoying and like in his face or anything like that. I just kind of wanted to give him his space. I was really nervous leading up to our scene because I thought that it was going to get canceled because that's happened to me before that's happened to me before where guys will cancel the scene or they'll forfeit the scene because they just can't perform or they're in their head. And that's a given when you're working with guys that are normally attracted to the opposite. So I was kind of expecting that to happen because it started off very slow and it was kind of dragging on and we had to keep pausing. But as soon as we got into the swing of things, and I think it was shortly after we kissed for the first time, it was like fireworks. Like we didn't even need to be told what to do anymore. I think we stopped one last time and it was for a very short amount of time. Like we didn't have to stop and fluff ourselves or anything. And he just started like giving himself to me. And I think he really enjoyed the way I kiss. Cause I, I will say I'm a great kisser. I am, I'm a great kisser, tons of experience and practice with it and that's one of my skills. So I think once he kissed me, he was like, okay, this boy knows what he's doing. So we got into the scene. Again, it was very realistic. It was sensual, but not, not like it was with Kyle. It was still high energy at some points, but it wasn't fake. It wasn't overly dramatic or theatrical or anything like that. After that scene, he started hanging out with me and we started hanging out with each other and just, you know, talking about more things and joking around with each other. And I only had two days with him before that shoot ended. So I kind of figured, okay, I'm never going to see him again. That's one of the disadvantages about working in this 
industry is that you usually will never see that scene partner that you enjoyed ever again. Sometimes if you're lucky, you will, but I kind of knew that I wasn't going to see him again, so it kind of sucked, but I didn't let myself like fall in love with him or anything. But that's going to lead into my all-time favorite scene partner who I did fall for. I will say I fell for him. So this was during my third ever adult film shoot. So I was very new still. I didn't exactly know my limits. I didn't know how big of eggplants I could take. I didn't know like what to do if this happens or just, you know, those skills that you kind of learn. And this guy was and still is my dream guy. When I say dream guy, I mean he was tall and I was tall at that time too. So I don't, I really haven't grown much. I was 6'1" back then and this was back in 2019. So it was a while ago, not too long ago. But again, I was 6'1". He had to have been 6'5". So he was taller than me and I felt kind of intimidated by him, which is a turn on for me because I am taller and I do feel confident in myself and my abilities. So whenever I feel like a guy can kick my butt, that kind of turns me on. I hope that's not weird. But he had very much big D energy, and he was very masculine, very straight. He had a countryside to him, which is also another weak spot in my... Because <laughs> I grew up around country dudes, and it's just kind of always going to be ingrained in me, and it's always going to be an attraction that I have. So he had this, like, country twang to his voice. Just, um... He actually had strawberry blonde hair like me as well, so... We almost looked like brothers a little bit, but not that similar. I thought, wow, this guy is like my dream guy. So the entire time, I'm trying to play it cool around him and not like <laughs> hyperventilate or anything crazy like that. And we actually ended up hooking up on the first night. Well, not full-fledged hooking up. On the first night, we were in the basement where all the models stay. and. There were other models there. He was the oldest model though, so I was kind of getting along with him more than I was the other models. And again, we were just talking about our lives. And usually I do that with these models because I want to at least feel like I know a little bit about them before we get in front of the camera. He was just sharing like his job. He had a really interest, fascinating job. So he traveled around and actually made really good money doing what he was doing. I'm not gonna share all of the details because there are some people out there that'll know who I'm talking about if I do. But overall, he was another really driven guy and he was just doing the adult films for side income, you know, a little side hustle. And I respected that because he was a straight guy and he was able to kind of turn that off and he was able to kind of play this part as being the all-American, full-fledged, like, top. <laughs> so on the first night, we were watching TV and all of the other models had went to the dorm room. And the dorm room was just this large room with twin beds on each side of the wall. So there was that and then there was another bedroom down in the basement that just had one queen bed. So he ended up calling that bed because we did get picked up at the airport at the same time and um, he called it before anybody else did. So I ended up uh, putting my stuff in the other dorm room and after all of the other models went to bed we were just watching TV in the living room and all of a sudden he just asked like do you want to give me head? And I was like yeah. <laughs> exactly like that and um, I'm like thinking I'm the luckiest guy on earth because he has to be attracted to me at least a little bit to ask me that and he didn't give me any vibes that he was a guy that likes guys so I felt like oh okay I must be special or he just wants some head after a long day <laughs> you know and so I was like okay and so I get into it like probably a good two minutes later. I'm enjoying this every moment, by the way. I'm like, this is perfect. Like, his eggplant was perfect size. It was big, but not too big. It was nice and thick. 
and he didn't smell or anything like that, and he had a great body, very strong hands. So as I was, you know, going in on it, two minutes later, a model comes out of the dorm room and sits next to us, and he's like, he's like, what are you guys doing? I want to join. So, by the way, this particular model who I'm really into, his name's Jerry. That's what we're going to call him. So, the other model kind of just kills the vibe. And I couldn't even finish giving him a happy ending. And he pulled his shorts back up and we just talked a little bit. So, the other model went back into the dorm room once he realized that he wasn't going to get in on any of this action. I wasn't going to let him. And Jerry wasn't going to let him either. So probably five minutes after he goes back into the room, we go over into the large bedroom with the queen bed and he's like, let's hook up, dude, like, let's do it. He was still very excited, if you know what I mean, visibly. <laughs> and um, I was just nervous. I was like, I don't think we should, you know, I had another scene tomorrow and this particular studio has rules for each and every model to read and sign off on when they get to the shoot house. And there is one rule in there that says, do not hook up off camera. You will be sent home. And even though I had a good relationship with the producers of this studio, I didn't want to overstay my welcome in any way or, you know, break the rules and be disrespectful in any way. So as much as I wanted to hook up with Jerry that night and just let him do whatever he wanted to me, something inside of me wouldn't let me. And I still regret not letting him do whatever he wanted to me that night because I'm so into him. Like I still am so into him. I follow him on Snapchat. We do talk sometimes too, which is nice, but um, he's a dad now. So this wasn't even our scene. So. Two days later, we get to our scene, and I'm just asking him, like, you know, what do you like? What do you not want me to do? He's like, okay, don't shave anywhere because I don't like the prickly hair feeling. So I kind of let things grow out a little bit for two days, you know, however long that can grow out. I just let him take charge, and our scene lasted, I think, 40 minutes, but it was because we both wanted it to last longer. So typically a really good, simple scene will last like 20 to 25 minutes. And that's just not stopping at all, you know, going all the way through it, not having to fluff yourself or anything. But with him, we were just taking our time and like really enjoying the moment. And he was like smelling my armpits and like licking my chest and picking me up. I had never had a guy pick me up before this scene. So... I was like, okay, wow, <laughs> like I'm literally falling in love with this guy. But I knew, again, in the back of my head, I knew I was never going to see him again. But then, listen to this. So we get like a round of applause at the end of the scene, and they're like, oh, this is going to be a hit, and it is a hit, it is a hit. But so they give us our round of applause and everything, and then they tell us, which I was super excited to hear that the next day we were going to do another scene together in a different way. And I was just like, thank you, Lord. <laughs> like, thank you so much. Because again, guys, when I first started with the studio, this particular model, Jerry, he is the guy who I would watch to get me excited and, you know, ready to go. He was who I would watch when I was in college still. And I was just in so much disbelief and I couldn't fathom the fact that I had just got this scene out of the way with him and I was next to him and I had kissed him and I had tasted him and it was just such a memorable experience that I'll never forget. That was the list of my top three all-time favorite scenes, guys. Jerry definitely takes the cake. I wish we could just have a round three. To be honest, I wish I would do anything to do that with him because he is the all-time best hookup I've ever had. And any time anybody asks me, like, what's your favorite scene partner, I already know what to say because it's just so unforgettable. When you have a great hookup, it truly is unforgettable. And there's little triggers that remind you of it. And 
Yeah. So my time in the adult film industry wasn't all bad, trust me. In the beginning, it was very fun, and I felt so grateful to have the privilege to work in that industry. But then as time went on and I started getting older and my brain started to fully develop, <laughs> I started to realize, what am I doing? What am I doing? Time is just flying by and, you know, I realized I didn't want to wake up one day and not know what to do and just realize that I wasn't getting gigs anymore or anything like that. I wanted to be one step ahead of that because I don't know how I would have felt if I left the industry feeling like nobody wanted to work with me. Because when I did leave it, I still had gigs lined up that I had to cancel because I was planning to go on them, but then I had this like spiritual awakening that was just not allowing me to continue on in that industry. But yes, guys, please let me know what you thought about this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.